I can say the word we usually use better is mm -hmm. peaceful place. Okay. Because sometimes not everybody knows what a safe space is. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that word can also be triggering yeah. when you're talking in a therapy session. Because when you think about the amount of people who told you you were safe and, right. and then you that were was betrayed, not, yeah, exactly. there could be an expectation of it's safe for now. Right. Inflicted or just like I don't know disguise. Mm -hmm. I don't know how what it impacts as well as as a genuine, you know, interaction. Yeah. But yeah. That's funny. When you are done with the intake process mm -hmm. what's usually your next action item for the patient that well your client yeah that you're gonna be working on well working with not just on so it's very interesting because mm -hmm. in our program yeah they really get you educated on all the parts and when you have an intake mm -hmm. that is actually one of the most important because you can see right away from mm -hmm. like not even knowing anything about the person yeah um what they can say about their essence what they do what they're needing um if they're caregivers if um they're they've been through anything in their life that they want to work in mm -hmm. but at the same time things usually don't don't just come up quickly yeah so a lot of the intake is just us trying to figure out in the beginning or in the present what mm -hmm. they need yeah. and slowly it just comes out um so yeah I, I don't think it would i don't think the way they just teach us to it's like it always has to be something very intentional and the intake gets you that part mm -hmm. because then you can see if for example our site is 24 emergency hours that we can assist you mm -hmm. or is it not then that client cannot be attended with us but then there's referrals that you can do in different specific areas yeah um so without an intake you really um, don't have the backbone to start therapy which that's why um not everything can be called be called art therapy like for example right now mm -hmm. we're definitely making art and we're talking and this is a conversation that really like deep in um you know i don't know conversation between humans mm -hmm. but therapy is way more than that because we have to include treatment we have to include all of these other history parts that um it needs confidentiality mm -hmm. it definitely needs a safe space um that's not out there seen for others so it's, yeah. yeah you know it's like the pattern the parameters are really different um what would you say are the five pillars of a safe space when it comes to art therapy mm. and if you don't have five yeah if you're like you know these three would do i think mm -hmm. five kind of <laughs> blurs things yeah. it's fine i can say the word we usually use better is mm -hmm. peaceful please okay because sometimes not everybody knows what a safe space is mm -hmm. so sometimes that word can also be triggering yeah. when you're talking in a therapy session because when you think about the amount of people who told you you were safe and right and then you that were was betrayed not, yeah exactly. there could be an expectation of it's safe for now right yeah so when you know we have trainings it's like you know peaceful place seems less mm -hmm. um in hyper arousal is really more like okay where can be where can it be or where, where can i create my peaceful space mm -hmm. um so maybe three pillars definitely are a space that the human feels calm mm -hmm. it's really hard to have therapy or be in therapy when you're in hyper arousal mm -hmm. Could you define what hyperarousal yeah, is? Yeah, of course. Um, so there's this concept of window of tolerance mm -hmm. that we use a lot. And there's an area of hyperarousal and then hypoarousal. Mm -hmm. So when we go into flight or flight mode, usually we go to both ways. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or we get super hyper um, in the fact of being very emotional, um, expressing um, those parts like outside aggressively or being very anxious all the time, yeah. um, that it's being in a, in a hyper state. But some people go into hypo and then they go to enclosing themselves or just like feeling low all the time, low energy. Mm -hmm. 
it doesn't mean that they're not feeling a lot. They're just yeah. feeling it differently than others, right? Yeah. So when you have, for example, a client that's in hyperarousal in a session, you're going to see that immediately. Mm -hmm. So um, there's ways that we try to first work with that. Um, before even assessing art because we need them to be okay and calm and know that everything's you know here safe in this space with together okay so I think that would be one mm -hmm. um, the second is being very uh, conscious of culture and background and diversity mm -hmm. because sometimes it can get blurred that everything every therapy is like the same yeah. which it it's not when it comes to culture because uh therapy is very different in different cultures like for example it could be a taboo in china to go to therapy mm -hmm. or in puerto rico like now people are starting to talk about like mental health for example mm -hmm. so the way they approach it too has comes from a cultural background or comes from that cultural shock that they're experiencing with the other therapists therapists yeah. because you can be with me right now and um even if we were the same race or identity we it's like there is a cultural exchange we're having our days are completely different exactly like yeah. there it doesn't matter um even the age or race like we are still having a cultural experience mm -hmm. um so that's i would be that the second and the third creativity there's no way that you can have a peaceful space without that because we need to feel like we can create without being judged. Yeah. Um, so I would say those three. Yeah. Okay, good job, you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when it comes to the commodifying of art, when it comes to like sip and paints or mm -hmm. uh, seeing people do art therapy events publicly. Right. Are there things that you usually look for to let you know, okay, this is an art therapy group session that's being done right. correctly versus uh, you're just looking to get a dollar? Right. Yeah. So uh, I came across this this week, actually. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, they were doing like a paint jean type of thing, mm -hmm. um, and they put it in the advertisement, like art therapy workshop. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't have anybody also certified with art therapy in the space um, mm -hmm. or a science. And I was like, okay, so um, it just seems like, you know, you when it's <laughs> art therapy for sure, it's when it's like actually supervised. Take Sorry. your time. Sorry. I was going to say, thinking. take your time, take your time. Like, hey, you don't have to apologize. Um, You're fine. We're in the yeah. moment right now. Because so. <laughs> mm -hmm. when it's like workshops that feel like art is involved mm -hmm. it's not necessarily always art therapy okay. because you're not ch 